following video you're about to watch contains inappropriate language is not suitable for children 10 to 15 years old above. You need to shake them off, Abby. This whole rotten family, like I did. <laughs> well, you didn't shake them off too well. One of them's trying to kill you. Okay, you got, you got a point there, kiddo. <sighs> oh, shit. Mum's calling me. Don't answer it. Come on, Abby, ignore her, please. She knows how to leave a message. See? Wasn't that so hard? That felt weird. You know, your mom gave me a big pitch at the meeting. Told me that I should be selling my share to the rest of the family. I told her dad left me the business, and they would get my share only when they pried it from my cold, dead hands. I just kind of thought they'd wait a few years. <laughs> they would... they would never. You don't know that, Abby. I've been having a lot of research done recently for my autobiography, and this family has got secrets, believe me. I wouldn't put anything past them. Well, I should really get to the quiz before Mom kills me. That wasn't meant to be a joke. I know. You can do this. I believe in you, Abby. You know them. You know what makes them tick, right? Use that to your advantage. What if I screw it up? Well, I am betting my life on that not happening. Okay, I'll try. I'll be here, listening, and I'll help as much as I can. Remember, Abby, find the poison, find the proof, find the killer. Your mom's on the warpath. I would just leave her alone for now. I think your best chance of success is probably speaking with Lottie, Toby. If you're feeling brave enough, Auntie June. But Mama, maybe because it's your birthday, that's why you should go first? No. Well, how about nobody goes first, and then we can all just fuck off to bed? <sighs> Hiya, Auntie June. I uh, haven't seen you for a while. How have you been? Remarkable. Of all the conversational starters in the English language, that's the one you plump for. It's riveting. Oh, sorry. I, I was going to ask about... Nothing. Uh, that was a disaster. I've had worse conversations with June. When I was 12, she cut up my shoelaces with a pair of scissors in front of me. And I was just sitting there thinking, I hope she stops at the shoelaces. Maybe try something different next time. I'm not sure if I want a next time. <laughs> you got to give it a try, kiddo. For now, come on, let's get back to the quiz. 
Oh, I can't stand this. If no one's going to volunteer, then I'll just decide. Lottie, you can go. I haven't prepared anything. The next words out of your mouth better be, yes, Mum, or so help me God. Yes, Mum. Oh, OK, I know. Um, I've got, like, a live Q&A next month with Studio Magazine, so you guys can help me prep. Just ask a fucking question, Lottie. OK, everyone pick your team, please. Toby, do you want to team up with me? Ah, uh, did someone just say my name? Yeah, I was asking if you wanted to... Sorry, just... gonna have to speak up. Signal's breaking up. Do you want to team up with me? Still can't hear anything. Do you want... Oh, Toby, just stop pricking about and team up with your brother. <sighs> Fine. Who's next? Teams? Yeah, I... Uh, I just need to go to the loo. Oh, Jesus Christ, Dad. What the hell is this quiz? Chaos. You play the whole thing in teams? Sort of. We pick a new team each round. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I can't remember how it started. Probably some doomed attempt to make things fair or avoid another fight. You know what they're like. I sure do, kid. I sh <laughs> Are you OK? Uh, I've been better. You better go pick a teammate. Oh, I'm not starting with Mummy. I'll be through this bottle before the first question. Well, you getting through that bottle has nothing to do with Mum. Girls, behave yourselves. What would your father say if he saw you like this? Why do you have to bring Daddy into everything? I mean, you're talking to us like we were children. June started it. Hello, my gorgeous girl. How are you, love? I'm OK, thanks, Nan. How are you? Oh, don't worry about me. Same as usual. How's work, love? Um, Met anyone recently? Uh, when am I seeing you next? Uh, question one... We'll finish our chat later, love. I was recently interviewed by fashion icon Jani O oh for her YouTube channel. In that interview, I bravely revealed my biggest fear. What is it? Crikey. Well, she used to hate spiders, didn't she? Or was that you? Actually, and now I think of it, that might have been Bradley. <laughs> Which one of you was petrified of geese? Lottie is definitely scared of spiders, but she's kind of had this weird fear for a while about going bold. What a silly girl. Although I don't know if she'd admit that in the interview. Or in this quiz. I wish she was more like you, Abby, love. <laughs> She's been spoiled by her father too much. That's her problem. Let's go with spiders. The correct answer is... Spiders. Oh, you know, it's actually really hard for me to talk about this. Oh, dear. Question two is, in that same interview with Jani O, oh, she asked me, what is my greatest achievement to date? This might be kind of easy for some of you, but I guess I'll figure out who actually watched the interview, won't I? Did you watch it, love? Yeah, I meant to. Oh dear. Well, she was really happy when she grew old enough to drink. Maybe that's it. Nan? Can I ask you something? Of course, love. So the answer is being interviewed by Jani O. Oh, what else could I say? She is an icon. What happened at the meeting the other night? You know what it's like, love. This family loved to bicker. Did you notice anything different? Well, I've never seen your Auntie June drink so much. <laughs> and that's saying something. She seemed far more anxious about the meeting than she normally is. I don't know what she was expecting. I mean, your mother was planning to tell Marcus that she wanted to buy him out. But before everything started, June said to me that it was going to be the end of the road for Marcus. She can't have thought he'd give up his share in the family business that easily. OK, I still don't have question three yet, so just like... I don't know, chill, I'll let you know. Was the meeting mostly arguments? 
like usual. It was a bit of a disaster, to be truthful. Your Auntie June knocked one of her huge candles right into Marcus's lap. Awful smell it was. Don't know why anyone would want that in their home. She must have to light another candle to get rid of the stench. Toby threw his drink over Marcus to put the flames out, but it didn't work. So your mother had to throw another drink over him. Thankfully that worked. But then Marcus said he burned his hand. Fair play to Lottie. She was the quickest to react. She got a cold cloth and put it on the wound and Bradley got some painkillers for Marcus. I don't know what we'd have done without those kids. Oh, this is a good one. Okay, question three. I recently modeled in the publicity campaign for which product? Gosh, any ideas, love? Yeah, I, th I think it's this makeup brand. Well, sort of. She's, she's been spamming her followers with emails about it. I signed up to a mailing list as a favor. Regretting it now, I bet. Little bit, yeah. Lottie keeps trying to make me get an email, but I'm not falling for it. This bald bloke on BBC One keeps going on about how the internet is essentially a giant scam. <sighs> what was the question? Some, something about makeup? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's called Dark Genie Virtual Eyeshadow. Virtual? What does that mean? Basically, it's kind of like a, a filter that you pay for and um, you superimpose your photo with this eyeshadow, but it doesn't really exist. Well, except for as this virtual brand. Anyway, it makes you look like you're wearing this, like, glittery, magical eyeshadow. Sorry, Abby, you've lost me. I think I lost me too. Shall I just answer it? The answer is Dark Genie Virtual Eyeshadow. Trust me, it's the future. I can wear whatever I want and I never have to wash my face. And everyone on my mailing list is entitled to 10% off their first purchase. But the offer ends this month, so hurry quick. Shall I get some? <laughs> Question four, guys. So which famous musician recently DM'd me for a hookup? What's a hookup? I really don't want to say sex thing, is it? <laughs> I'm not sure if this is a clue, but he was staying at the Hilton and he asked me to meet him in his car. Oh, apparently that's like his thing. Lottie, do you think this is at all appropriate for a family occasion? You think your nan wants to hear this? I don't mind. She's only young. Let her have her fun. This kind of behaviour is unbecoming to our family, Lottie. No one's saying you're not entitled to a sex life, but you shouldn't be shouting about it. Your mother's just jealous, Lottie, because her sex life's about as active as the surface of the moon. And you're just batting them away, aren't you, June? <laughs> you've probably dried up down there. Girls, you're embarrassing yourselves now. Honestly, I don't care. Someone else can have a go. At least I tried. Oh, well, that's a shame. I thought we made a good team. Yeah, me too. It's been lovely talking to you, love. I don't hear much off the grandkids anymore. Well, apart from Toby, he's been phoning me a few times recently. Funny thing, he, he barely says a word, but I can tell by his voice he's been crying. It's like he wants to say something really important, and then he just asks me how I am and says bye. Hope he's OK. You, you'll tell me if he says anything to you, won't you, love? Yeah, yeah, of course I will. Well, i best pop to the ladies' room before it all starts up again. Bye, love. Bye, Nan. I am never teaming up with that freak again. I was only trying to make conversation. Uh, have you told Mum about your latest purchase? Huh? He's bought a gun, Mum. Literally, the very gun that was used to murder that famous astronaut. Well, it's not the exact gun, it's the same make of gun, right? There's a difference. Oh, for God's sake, you two. If I have to listen to you bickering any more, I'm going to come up to Bradley's room and blow my own brains out. Your grandma sure loves to talk, but it wasn't all meaningless. Plus, I have some news that... Oh! Oh! oh. That could really help us. The doctors have managed to narrow the poison down to three possibilities. So let's check out everything that we have so far.
I've never seen your Auntie June drink so much. <laughs> and that's saying something. She seemed far more anxious about the meeting than she normally is. Yeah, signal's not great here, guys, so uh, I'd rather do my round later. I can give it a go, as long as someone explains the rules to me again. Oh, no. <sighs> Look, I'll do my round. Let's try and bring some order and civility back to proceedings, shall we? Dare I even say a bit of class? <laughs> I shall perform a piece of music. One of the classics. Gold! Spandau Ballet. One point to me. No, I mean the true classics. No, true! That's another one. Two points to me. I'm talking about Mozart, Bach, Chopin. Actual geniuses. You don't care about geniuses. You only cared about Spandau Ballet and the saxophone players, tight trousers. Well, this may come as a shock to you, June, but some people's tastes mature with age. You're right. And you have. Aged. What are we playing? I shall perform a recognisable melody and you must simply tell me the name of the piece or to make it easier for the slow ones, just tell me the name of the composer. So we're playing Name That Tune then? Yes, Mother, if you like. Fancy being with me, June? There's nothing I'd like more than to repeatedly explain what's going on to a slightly senile old woman over a dodgy internet connection. I mean, it's one of my favourite things. Well, I might ask a few questions. Well, come along then. Let's get it over with. Nimini pimini, nimini pimini. Millicent millipede multiplied majestically. Millicent millipede multiplied majestically. Hey, Bradley, how are you? Uh, who's that on your T-shirt? Well, you've never heard of Keith Wilson Keys before. Should I? Yeah, he killed six people in one weekend. Medford, Oregon, 1997. They called him the Beaver State Cleaver Killer. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, him. He's a, he's a good one. I didn't realise that they put serial killers on T-shirts. No, 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 he's, he's, not, he's not a serial killer. He's a spree killer. And uh, yeah, you can get a lot more than this if you know where to look. Everyone be quiet and listen carefully to the first piece. La 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 Oh, I think I know this. I think it's Beethoven. La 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 I mean, I guess Beethoven's a pretty safe bet because it's either going to be him or Mozart, right? La 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 I'll go with Beethoven. And that was, of course, fur Elise by the great man himself, Beethoven. Ah, we got it right. Piece number two. La 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 you should tell her. I'm not going to tell her. Mum, I, I think you've pressed a voice filter by mistake. There should there should be a button on your screen. Is that it? Yeah. Perfect. Hello? 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 Well, thanks for that, everyone. You're all a great help. <clears throat> Moving on. La 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 I can't even remember what we're supposed to be doing now. La 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 So do you like music? I mean, uh stuff like this. Classical music. I like the ones that sound sad. Yeah, me too. Flick, are we seriously supposed to just know these? I mean, give us a clue. Well, only an idiot would need a clue for these. But I suppose... Cock off. Here's a clue. The composer was German. Well, that's barely a clue, is it? Fine. The composer's first name is Johann. Oh. Well, I can think of two composers that are definitely German. Who? Hmm. 
Abby. What are you doing? You gotta get back to the quiz, Abby. Abby! Are you cheating? What? Where did you just go? Were you Googling the answers or something? The answers? Have you got amnesia? Uh, um, no, the quiz, sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. What was the question? There wasn't a question, it was... Oh yeah, yeah, uh, Mum's song. Uh, how far did we get? <sighs> you said you knew two German composers. Yes, I did. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I just, uh, I, I, can't, I can't remember right now. Um, Bach? Yeah, oh, um, and Beethoven. The two Bs. You're being so weird. Sorry. Let's try Bach. I can't believe some of you still got that wrong, even with such an easy clue. Well, the answer is Johann Sebastian Bach's minuet in G minor. Bach, Werke, Versaiknis, Anhang 115. Snappy title. <laughs> Why are you always trying to make jokes? I don't know. You're not funny. I'm not sure what to do for my next piece. It needs to be something with power, yet emotional heft. Be patient while I think. I mean, what does your mum get out of this music? I'm not sure. I think she just likes it. I mean, she was playing some of these pieces of music at the meeting. Uh, the meeting? Yeah, it's like she was trying to show everyone she was in charge. It wasn't even her house. I think she's just got, like, a thing about trying to control whatever's happening, you know? What was happening? A lot. Maybe you should have been there. This next piece is so obvious, I considered not doing it, but for some reason it's been going round in my head. Perhaps this will get it out of my system. La, 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 la... Oh, I can never remember the name. Funeral March. It's Funeral March by Chopin. It's one of my favourites. All oh, right, yeah. It's a, it's a good one. La, 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 la. That piece was the incredibly moving Funeral March by Chopin. I already know what I'm doing for my fourth piece, so be quiet. No! Oh, no, no. The humidity's changed. I can't sing in this. I could sprain something. Let's move on to the next round. I was surprised you weren't at the meeting. Aren't you Uncle Marcus's biggest cheerleader? Uh, yeah, no, I, I really wanted to be there. It was just, there was this thing at work and... You should have been there. He needed you. What are you saying? Everybody else hates him. The whole family, apart from you. I mean, my mum spends most of her time thinking about how much she hates him. After too many drinks, she starts rambling about him, talking about how he's ruined Grandad's legacy, how a company should have come to her or your mum. <laughs> At once, <laughs> when it was really bad, she asked me if I knew how to hire a hitman. She thought maybe I'd know something from the black internet. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> she meant dark web, obviously. I asked her why she wanted to know, and she just said she saw it in a film once. And uh, yeah, it was the last time she mentioned it, at least to me. Bradley? Do you know something? I don't know. Maybe. Bradley, what? <sighs> Shit. <sighs> Fabulous. I've never seen your Auntie June drink so much. <laughs> I mean, my mum spends most of her time thinking about how much she hates him. Fabulous birthday so far, Flig. Do you think we're actually going to finish a single round this evening? Uncomfortable silence. My favourite. Abby! Jesus Christ, what the hell? They're on to me. 
Who? The killer. I got an email, anonymous. They no, told me Abby. to stop or, or. Oh my God, I, I can't do this. I'm afraid it is too late for that. No, I can't, I told you. Abby. No, I'm not built for this shit. What are they gonna do to me? Abby, stop! <laughs> stop! What, <laughs> Uncle Marcus? <laughs> are you okay? It's getting worse, Abby. I've got less time than I thought. Don't give up on me. You're the only chance I got. Please, Abby. Please. Okay. I mean, my mum spends most of her time thinking about how much she hates him. At once, <laughs> when it was really bad, she asked me if I knew how to hire a hitman. She thought maybe I'd know something from the black internet. <laughs> like, she meant dark web. Okay, listen up guys. Uh, my signal seems to have settled down a bit, yeah? So let's do my round now. But listen, I've got a pretty cool new spin on how to- Everyone get in teams. Right, yeah, 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 sure, cool. Yeah, let's start there. Uh, Lottie, will you- Ew, no. Don't let her talk to you like that, Bradley. Well, you say worse to him every day. The other day you called him a slug. That was affectionate. At least my Bradley's not a brainless, stuck-up little moron like Lottie. I'm not stuck up. Do you, you ever speak to my daughter like that again oh, and I'll- Flick, I didn't know you'd suddenly become interested in your children. Stop, I'll like team up with Bradley, whatever, if it'll save another argument. Cool. Let's just make this clear. You can team up with me, but that does not mean you can talk to me. Okay. We're gonna expand some minds here, guys. <laughs> hey, Auntie Felicity, look, just give me a chance and I might just change your life for the better, yeah? Toby, the only way you can make my life better is if you never speak to me ever again. Oh, thank goodness. I've got a clever one on my team. You're the clever one, Nan. Don't be daft. Okay, everyone concentrating, yeah? This is... It's a little bit different to your typical quiz round. I like to call these empathy exercises. Now, I'll give you a scenario, and you have to relate to that scenario with empathy. Huh? Sounds simple, right? Well, I don't know what he's on about. Great, let's go. Now, imagine you're very poor. You're 12 years old. And you're getting up before sunrise because you have to walk eight miles to get to school. What's going on? Who's walking to school? And, and how far did he say? Eight miles? Well, why don't they just catch the bus? The school must run one. Uh, um... T Toby's not talking about anyone real. It's a hypothetical situation. Well, it doesn't sound funny to me. What? Oh, uh, no. Hypothetical. It means made up. Oh, right. So, what's the question? I don't know. <laughs> now, picture this. Halfway along this poor child's exhausting journey, he finds an old woman in the road, trapped under a dead horse. Do you stop to help her? Knowing that to do so will cost you a day's education. An education that is your only way out of poverty. Well, I don't know what he's on about. Anyway, are you all right, love? You seem a bit on edge tonight. Did you get those raspberry tarts I made? Your mother said I couldn't post food, but I bloody well did. Yes, yeah, I, I got them. Thank you. What on earth's the matter, love? I need to... I need to tell you about something that's happened to Uncle Marcus, something that happened at the meeting. Oh, love. There was a lot said in temper at that meeting. No point raking over old wounds. There is actually no correct answer to that dilemma. And do you know why? Because that's real life. Guys, there are no easy answers in life. Our privilege, it insulates us from 
so much... Toby, this is a load of old shit. Just ask a bloody question. Oh, dear. It's all kicking off again. You know, I should have known that an exercise like this would be a waste of time on this family. No emotional intelligence at all. You should all be ashamed. Well, someone else do their round so Toby will shut up. No, that's not fair. I want to do a round. No. But it's my turn. No. Listen, love. Before I go, there's one thing I've been meaning to ask you. Has your mother spoken to you about your Uncle Marcus lately? No. Why? The, the day of the meeting. It, it, your mother asked us all to get to the house early, before your Uncle Marcus got there. She told us... How did she put it? She wanted him out of the way. She was asking us all there to see if we'd support her in a move to take over the company, to take it off Marcus. Your mum wants to buy him out, but she can't meet his price. I think he's asking for too much just to annoy her. And obviously the company means a lot to him because of his dad. I, I know you try to stay out of all this financial stuff, but the company is for all of us, love. That's how your grandfather wanted it. I know. I think we best get back for the next